On today's Apple Daily, I am answering your comments on Titanium MacBooks. So after yesterday's video, there were a number of comments that came up uh, a few times from different viewers, and I really appreciate that you have all brought these up, and they're really good points. And I've been diving into the, some of the details because there were certainly some assumptions that were made uh, that weren't quite on the nose, and also some things that we didn't address. So let's clear some of this up now. For the latest Apple news, rumors, and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. I'm iCave Dave, and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. And if you ring the bell, don't forget to comment down in the comment section with hashtag notification squad so that I can give you a shout out at the end of the next video, like the guys at the end of this one. Also, if you've got a burning Apple question, you can use hashtag iCaveAnswers down there again in the comments with your question and it will be a question I will answer on the show. Uh, I make sure that you have used that hashtag just so I know that you are happy for me to um, pop your question up on the screen and answer it on the show. But for now, let's get into the questions. First one that came up, titanium doesn't conduct heat as well as aluminium, so it will make the thermals worse. The first half of this statement at least is correct. Uh, titanium is a worse conductor of heat than aluminium is, about 10 times worse. But actually, Apple doesn't intentionally use MacBook's casings as a heat sink. The opposite, actually. Because the base of their notebooks is heat conductive, Apple separates their cooling systems from it to avoid the base becoming uncomfortably hot on your lap. This was kind of proved out by Linus Sebastian and his little hobby channel, Linus Tech Tips, um, who actually have a video called something like Fixing Apple's Engineering in an Hour, where they do connect the MacBook Air, and this is the Intel version, of course, MacBook Air's heat sinks to the chassis, which does indeed keep the CPU temperatures lower, but it also gets hot enough on the base to be a lot less comfortable. And speaking of comfortable, this water bottle, lttstore.com. Check that out. Two Linus jokes in a row, one shoddy segue, and a product placement. This guy is literally a YouTube genius. Remember though, when we're talking about heat, we're now in the era of Apple Silicon, and even if the casing was intended for heat dissipation, since the shift away from Intel processors and Nvidia, or more recently, AMD graphics cards, there is way less heat to dissipate these days, to the point that the successor to the MacBook Air that Linus was testing and fixed doesn't even need a fan at all anymore, let alone any leg cooking modifications. Of course, as we get into the more powerful Apple Silicon SoCs with M1X, there will be a little bit more heat, but even when we do get to that point, Apple would rather blow it out through a vent than toast your trousers. So they'd probably prefer that less conductive chassis. Next question, titanium isn't lighter than aluminium or stronger than steel. I mean, that's not a question, that's people just telling me I'm wrong. This, this is an incredible material. It's stronger than steel, yet lighter than aluminum. This is a more nuanced point though than Steve Jobs really put out there in that video and I think it was because he was so excited about the spy planes. There was a reason that I let him say it rather than me. So titanium is 60% stronger than the same mass of aluminium but yes titanium is denser. So aluminium has a density of 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed while titanium is 4.5 grams per centimeter cubed so one kilogram of aluminium will be almost two times the size of, as the same weight of titanium but titanium has around 3.5 times the tensile strength of 6000 series aluminium. Tensile strength is not the best type of strength to compare these on, but it was the only one that I was able to find some really decent numbers that I would consider to be uh, reliable enough to compare. If you've got any better numbers for comparing these, please let me know them down in the comments. So why does all this matter? If you take an aluminium component and make it identically from titanium, then it would be heavier but if you're designing to the same strength that was needed for an aluminium part, then the titanium version will be lighter and use less material, which means it can be thinner. And we all know how Apple feels about making things thinner and lighter. More specifically, if you made the laptop's top shell from titanium instead of aluminium, then the metal could be thinner, giving you more depth for those cameras that everyone has been crying out for, or maybe even the dot projectors and more sensors that makes up the Face ID rig. Also, because of the strength of titanium, less of the computer could be made of metal in the first place, as I mentioned yesterday. The whole palm rest could be a single sheet of incredibly strong, maybe ceramic shield glass, including the trackpad itself. So your trackpad could extend across the full width of the computer in theory, 
but also allow the wireless charging via iPhone 12 style MagSafe. So having answered those questions, we have a thinner, lighter MacBook that can charge your iPhone via MagSafe now, but wait, how much is all of this going to cost me? Yep, one of the biggest themes of the comments was that titanium is so much more expensive than aluminium that the switch would price a lot of users out of the market. So, how much more expensive is titanium than Johnny Ives' beloved aluminium unibody enclosure? Well, it turns out it's about two and a half times more expensive, which sounds like a lot. And that's when we're talking about the base cost of the material itself, which is a bit of a bummer. But wait, how much would that actually add to the price of a MacBook Pro? Now let's look at the big one, the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, which weighs 4.3 pounds, or near enough 2 kilograms. Now not all of that is aluminium, we have batteries, a logic board, processor, keyboard, um, display, and trackpad. Uh, let's be super generous and say that those parts are just 500 grams, leaving us 1.5 kilograms of aluminium. What is the cost price of that? Well, a metric ton or 1,000 kilograms costs uh, just under $2,000. So in this example, we're paying out around $3 worth of raw materials in terms of aluminium to go into the computer. So multiplying that out, that means it would cost us almost $7.20 in titanium, which costs $4,800 per ton in the most recent figures that I could find. And they are admittedly from a year or so ago. And that's, of course, as well, assuming that you need as much, which you wouldn't because it is, in fact, stronger. Titanium's pricing has dropped massively over the past few years, and around 95% of titanium sold is sold as titanium oxide, which is one of the most common white pigments in the world. It peaked around 2006 at almost $17,000 per metric ton, which, corrected for inflation, would be around $22,000 now but the pricing is around the lowest it's been for the past couple of decades right now. Of course, this whole thing started with a new patent that I thought was interesting and Apple had filed. Apple files a lot of patents. Just yesterday, Apple won 31 new patents. These included three related to eye tracking for Apple Glass, multiplayer gaming around other players' avatars appearing as monsters to you so that everyone can play as the hero, and more patents on a VR-style headset that you can put your phone into like a Google Cardboard, and much, much more. So just because Apple has filed patents doesn't mean they're immediately doing all of the stuff they've patented. It just means they've been at least looking into it, they've done some research, and that means it could be quite interesting. So, have I managed to answer all of your questions on titanium MacBooks and the possibilities that we could have coming there? I do think thinness is probably going to be one of the keys, and I think that they might just make that frame out of it and include the ceramic shield glass as a, a big chunk of the interior. But let me know what you think they might do down in the comments. Just to finish off the show, though, we have got two new members to the notification squad, Miguel Sotomayor and... Igor Lakatos. Hopefully I've not completely butchered your names there, guys. Thank you so much for joining the Notification Squad. And if you want a shout-out just like that, where I can butcher your name, then like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let me know that you've done it in the comments with hashtag Notification Squad so that I know whose names to shout-out. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we'll have some actual news tomorrow rather than me just fixing the stuff that you didn't get from the last video because I rushed it. See you then.